All right, guys, we're really close now. We are very close to reloading 224 Valkyrie. Let's start off with some of the components that I plan on using. The reloading dies I'm going to use, talk about how some of the factory ammo is influencing what I'm doing, as well as uh, some of the brass prep I'm going to be doing. So let's grab some brass and let's talk about this real quick. So I bought a few boxes of factory federal ammo and I've saved the brass because I knew that I was going to be reloading. So as we check out the brass, um, I haven't noticed any like real inherent problems. Like most of the flash holes are all centered and they look really good. All the flash holes seem good and there's nothing out of spec or weird there. Out of all of them I've noticed, um, I did deburr these. A lot of people complain about Federal's brass, about how they have really jagged uh, flash holes. Whatever, you deburr them, then they're good to go. So, I've got almost 100 pieces hanging out here. One of the problems I've run into is the brass, after being once fired and resized, is almost to maximum length, like right out of the door. It's to the maximum spec that I've found. That is using Sierra's load data. So, I use the Lee trimmer, uh, case length gauge, and lock stud trimmer for my stuff. So that's how I trim all my brass. If you haven't seen it, you get this little cutting head. Uh, your piece of brass slips over it. And then there's a little pin that'll come out of the flash hole, and it will bottom out on this steel plate as it rotates around and cuts into it. Unfortunately, Lee doesn't make a case gauge length cutter yet. Now this is like middle of July 2018. In a couple months they might, I don't know. But for now, they don't make this pin. So I bought one that was really close to the specs, um, just a little bit long, and that was also a 22 caliber. This little pin comes through the flash hole, and the length from the tip of this pin to the shoulder uh, that bottoms out along the lock stud here determines the length. So from the shoulder to the tip of this pin. So if you buy one a little that's a little bit long, you should be able to just grind off this pin and get it to the correct length. So I thought I had that figured out. I bought a case gauge uh, for the 222 Remington. It's a pretty short little case and it's really close to what the 224 Valkyrie spec is. However, I did run into an issue. When I bought the 222 Remington, this is really close to what it comes to, comes from the factory like. Got a nice little uh, tapered shoulder right here down into that pin that comes out of the firing pin hole. This is my 223 Remington case gauge, but it'll demonstrate exactly what happened. So if you slip the 223 Remington down in here, this shoulder protrudes out of the neck in excess. Basically my cutter's up here and my brass would never come in contact to be trimmed. Now, if you push the firing pin through the bottom of the brass here, this angled portion on this pin runs in to the bottom of the brass. So it can only come out so far. We threw the whole cutter and lock stud in the drill with this chucked up and we took a file and then we zipped it around and we pushed the file against that shoulder and then we pushed this shoulder back to where the brass could actually slip over and contact the, uh, the cutting head here. And then once we got contact, I went a little bit further so that, because I had a long piece of brass at this point, it hadn't been trimmed. I went a little bit further so that I could trim it. And then I had this really long pin sticking out. At that point, we took it in on a, a little disc belt sander and we sanded off the tip of this and we got it just down and it ended up coming out about five thousandths short. So now I'm able to trim my brass to spec exactly where I need it. Long story, but cool little tool that I had to create. It was a lot of fun to come up with. And uh, so I bought this thing for five bucks, an afternoon in the garage, a little bit of grinding and sanding, and ta-da, you saved yourself $150 over buying a universal case cutter. Let's talk about some of the bullets and some of the powders that I'm gonna be using for the 224 Valkyrie. Now, for my 223 Remington, I've had a few 22 bullets laying around, and there's no reason that I can't try them out in my Valkyrie. So over here on the right, we've got some Everglades bullets. Uh, Eagle Eye Shooting sent these over to me. And these are 
really similar to a Hornady 75 grain boat tail hollow point, um, but made by a separate company, obviously. And they're just a nice little hollow point boat tail. They weigh 75 grains. Good looking little bullet. Uh, these are great for uh, ARs because they fit in magazine length and you can shoot them long range. They have a pretty good ballistic coefficient. I think somewhere near 400, uh, 0.400. So good little bullet right there. We're definitely going to be trying those in the Valkyrie. Uh, a couple other bullets I've got laying around. I have some 69 grain hollow point boat tails from Sierra. These things just seem to like to shoot good out of any 22 caliber. Unfortunately, I don't have very many left. Um, I've got enough to do like a, a small ladder test with one powder. I think I have enough to do like uh, three four shot groups with them, but I plan on picking up more eventually anyway, uh, especially if I see some promising results out of the Valkyrie with it. I'll likely be using uh, some faster powders with these two. Uh, speaking of faster powders, I've got a box of Hornady 55 grain VMAX. These things have shot awesome with almost any powder I've put in in both of my ARs. There's something about this design that, man, they just shoot excellent. I really like the little 55 VMAX. Unfortunately for what I do, they're not that great, but, I mean, they're a VMAX. You can go out and uh, go varmint hunting with them like little bunnies or gophers or whatever, and they'd be devastating on that. Um, good little rounds. They're cheap. They're easy to find. These ones have cantalures. I never really crimp anyway, I've never had an issue, but I'm really excited to see how fast the Valkyrie can push a little tiny bullet like a 55 VMAX. That should be good entertainment. I have shot these like 450 or 500 yards in one of my videos. I don't remember. Go check it out if you want to see me shoot these long range just using the reticle on my scope. Now I've bought two boxes of bullets here specifically for the Valkyrie. On the right we've got some Sierras. Now, Federal makes factory ammunition that comes loaded with Sierra uh, Match King bullets, as you can see right here. These are the 90 grain, 90 grain Sierra Match King. Good looking round, awesome stuff. However, in my searches online, almost everywhere I checked, the 90 grain bullets were sold out. It's been up for debate if the 90 grains will stabilize, so I bought 95s because that's not gonna help anything. Um, I'm curious to see what the 95 grain bullets will do, but holy cow, man, look how long and sleek these bullets are. Like, you set this thing up next to a VMAX, it's almost twice the length of that thing. Really impressive looking round. Uh, you got a long, sleek O-Jive, and then it even tapers up uh, faster near the meat plat of the bullet, that little tiny hollow point. So the 95 grain uh, on the box, it says six and a half twist or faster. I have a one to seven twist. So we're probably gonna have to push these pretty damn fast, pretty hot out of the barrel to see what it will do. I do have a 22 inch barrel to help me get higher velocities. And I'm planning on picking up another powder specific for the 224 Valkyrie. In the Sierra load data, what they mention is uh, reloader 17 should be excellent for these and it should get you the highest velocities possible. Now the second box of bullets that I have uh, is the Hornady 88 grain ELD match. These are brand new. I think these Sierras came out this year as well. So lots of good stuff coming out for 22 caliber long range uh, rounds. So I've got, that, I've got the 88 grain ELDs. These are probably what I'm going to use to uh, try and replicate the 90 grain match king factory ammo. Once I find some Sierras in 90 grains, I'll go out and compare them, but here we go from base to base. The 95 definitely has a little bit of length on it, but the uh, boat tail length is really similar. I think the Sierra actually has a little bit longer boat tail. The contact surface with the rifling, the Sierra has a little more uh, contact area is, is there on there as well. But little redheads, I've really enjoyed shooting the ELD line of bullets. They work really excellent. So that's what we can expect as far as bullets, testing, and all that stuff. Now I've got some primers sitting back here. These are Federal Premium Ammunition AR Small Rifle Match Primers. The reason why I'm going to be using these, well A, I've got a couple hundred of them sitting around because that's what I use in my AR with a 223. 
but also on this factory ammunition. See that little tiny stamp on the primer? It says AR. Well, that means that these are AR small rifle match primers on here. I know that's what Federal uses in their ammunition, so that's what I'm going to use in my ammunition. This is the Federal Fusion line. Looking at all the other different, uh, fact, looking at all the different 224 ammo that I've used, this is the only one that has that AR stamp on it. So this is the only cartridge uh, coming out of Federal's factory line that uses these primers that I know of. I haven't broken them all down and looked at them yet. But uh, I find it interesting that the Fusion is what they use that on. So I got online one day and was looking around to buy a set of reloading dies and just trying to find a decent price on them. Uh, they're really expensive compared to other calibers and that's simply because it's a new caliber, which I think is a little bit ridiculous just because something's new doesn't deserve a higher price. Anyway, I got on Brownells and they were having a 10% off everything and free shipping if you spend over $99. So. I got 10% off these Redding reloading dies because these were in stock and I kind of wanted to try out some Redding dies. So if we take a look, uh, this is the seating die. I have not used the seating die yet because I haven't loaded anything. Uh, you got your little locking ring here. I'm not a huge fan of this style where it takes an Allen wrench and pushes into the threads. I like the ones that have an Allen wrench that go like cross-sectionally across here and then the whole ring squeezes into itself and holds onto the die. Uh, this is your decapping and resizing die. I have used this one to resize a lot of the brass. Uh, all this brass sitting in the bag is fully prepped and ready to go. It needs to be trimmed first, which is why I went into that great detail about my little trimmer that I have. Um, I'm gonna be starting that soon. The one detail I overlooked when I bought that 222 Remington uh, case gauge, it doesn't come with the correct shell holder for 224 Valkyrie which is 6.8 SPC. So I'm gonna to have to get online and order me a 6.8 SPC for the trim overall length gauge and see what I can do there. Um, I may end up having to buy a whole other 6.8 SPC trim length tool, but you know what, they're $5. It's not that big of a deal if I have to do that. Uh, all they had in stock, the Redding shell holders were out of stock, so I bought an RCBS. I put some V's on here so that I know that's for the Valkyrie. Again, this is just a 6.8 SPC uh, case shell holder. But very impressed with the quality of the reloading dies. Um, something I was curious about is on the seating die. Let's pop, let's tear this apart. I wanted to see the fitment of uh, the seating die against the long 95 grain Match King. So let me grab a bullet and I'll show you how they fit. All right, so let's start off with the Hornady 88 grain ELD. Uh, we'll slip this little guy in here. Not too bad. It wiggles a little bit. Uh, I don't know if it's bottomed out in there or what, but just basically the O jive doesn't match up super well. It's got a little bit of wiggle to it. Nothing scary. I'm going to use it. I mean, it's not going to stop me from using it, but the 95 Sierra Match King probably got a little more wiggle. Doesn't fit quite as well as that uh, 88 does. And then you got a 75 grain bullet. And that thing locks in there solid. That fits excellent. So, put a little pressure on there. That thing locks up solid. It's not going anywhere. Excellent fit on the 75 grain. Again, it wiggles with the longer, skinnier bullets, but you know what? I'm really not scared of that. I'll try it out, see how it goes. As far as powders, this is what I have available. This is what I'm going to start out with and see how it goes. Uh, I will be buying Reloader 17 as well uh, for the heavier bullets because it offers up high velocities. Having said that, I do have a little bit of H4350 on hand and Reloader 17 and H4350 have similar burn rates. Not the same, similar. But they're different powders from what I've read online. The Reloader 17 has like a softer pressure curve, it like builds up in a different way than H4350 does. But I really don't think I would blow up my gun if I tried some H4350 in it. This is a very slow powder, but I've got the longer barrel for the 224 Valkyrie, as well as shooting a heavy bullet. Um, this is a really small cartridge to be trying H4350 in, but it's definitely something I'm interested in. Uh, I just wanna talk to somebody who has a little more experience and kinda like wildcatting and figuring out their own stuff. So at some point we might just be trying out some H4350 in the 224 Valkyrie. 
At that point, of course, there's going to be a uh, don't follow what I'm doing. There's a high chance we're going to blow some stuff up. So we'll start out low, hopefully not too low. We'll find out. Uh, that's a potential if Reloader 17 doesn't shoot that awesome. Uh, maybe we'll try some H4350. But all right, guys, um, the next video will be brass prep. I've got some once fired factory ammunition. We'll be knocking out primers. We'll be getting them resized. We'll trim them down to spec and get everything whipped up into shape. And then we'll probably cut that video by itself and then get into reloading and finally get out and shoot this thing. Um, I do have videos shooting 1,000 and 1,300 yards, if that's something you're interested in. Um, hopefully I'll have a reloading video uh, shooting long range in the meantime as well. So hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think, and we will talk to you guys in the next video when we get into brass prep. We'll see you guys later.